Hello everybody, Wildside here. Um, so we've got a name for the new printer now. It's uh, called the Gico Snap. And Gico is our open source hardware venture that we're starting to uh, produce these as kits and to uh, hopefully bring you a lot more stuff that is open source and fun to build. Um, I've just received a challenge to produce a kit that is uh, braille labeled for the vision impaired. Um, I think I may actually give that a try. But uh, my last posting video, uh, there was no audio, so you couldn't really hear how the printer sounded. I know that's uh, probably a concern to a lot of people that have seen wooden printers before. They can be quite noisy, uh, especially with printers like this that are using the LM type of uh, linear bearings, which tend to rattle. Um, as you can hear, I don't know, uh, it doesn't sound much different to me than a rep wrap. Uh, aside from the motor humming, there's really not a whole lot of wrap. Uh, the frame is pretty solid. Um, there isn't any shaking or anything like that going on. I'm sure there would be if I were running it at a, at a higher speed. But I don't know that it would necessarily be affecting the print quality any much more than uh, any other rep wrap or some other uh, some other design. By the way, this is using uh, my new version two hot end. All of this stuff, uh, you know, the the design files, etc., are coming. I just. Uh, really into the development part of it right now, I'm trying to get these guys pushed out. Uh, the machine you're looking at here is uh, just a prototype. The design has migrated from this, but uh, haven't been able to get around to cutting the new pieces and testing things out. But essentially the, the next iteration is a little bit taller. Uh, there's still not enough room underneath to put a power supply is something that, uh, that I do want to do. I'd like to have everything just integrated into the box. But uh, if I have to, I suppose I can live with having a power su supply be external. Um, as far as the electronics, right now I'm using a RAMS. Uh, is this? this is a RAMS 1.3. Uh, and it's actually a board that I really like. I prefer it to the RAMS 1.4 simply because it's uh, easy to hand assemble if you get the whole thing as a kit. I'm uh, also going to be assembling the Sanguine Alolu and testing that out. And Linkomatic is uh, currently working with firmware and hardware uh, to produce some nice printer board uh, variants. So he's going to lay one of those on me to try out. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you? Not much else, I suppose. Um, so far, the printer seems reliable. Um, it's very easy to put together. Um, I don't know if you can see by the video here. Let me just spin around a little bit. Um, but basically, the assembly is um, purely using clips, such as the one you see here. Let me see if I can stand still long enough for the camera to autofocus. So we've got like a mortise and tenon. I can probably just take this off while the printer's printing without any problems. Let's see. Keep the camera's still outside. So there we go. It's too bright, maybe from this angle. So yeah, it's a mortise and tenon joint held in by a clip. One concern that's been expressed about this design is that uh, maybe um, wood would get loose over time. The printer would become very flimsy. Uh, the only thing I can say to that right now is that that time has not yet come. Um, everything is pretty tight so far. Um, 
and I believe that this is a self-tightening design, although I have no scientific evidence to back that claim. <laughs> Your mileage may vary. Uh, so here's the underside of the Y carriage. Um, there's another significant design change coming here. Uh, right now you see the carriage is uh, just supported by the, by the screws there and leveled with the nuts. Um, because this thing is cut on a laser, I think I can um, get away with putting a laser cut insert in under there that supports the bed. And then I will just leave the leveling up here uh, right on the uh, heated build platform. Um, so I think uh, having a shim down there that's just laser cut and maybe extending over to the edges is going to get you close enough that uh, it will only require minimal adjustment up on top. Uh, my method for mounting the heated build platform, as you can see, I, I always print with glass. Uh, I'm currently experimenting with uh, cheaper versions of glass and it seems to be okay. Um, so this is just picture frame glass sitting on top of the heated build platform, taped down with cap on tape. It's important that it be taped down uh, to the printer side uh, because the solid copper um, side of the board tends to um, bow convex, uh, which means it would you know, pull away in the center if, if it were on the bottom. So this way, when the heated build platform heats up, that Kapton tape in the corners really presses the center of the heat bed onto the glass. And then uh, the layer beneath, that's just uh, foam board. Um, it's actually uh, pretty heat resistant in the temperature ranges that we're talking about and works as a good insulator to get your heat bed uh, up to temperature really fast. And of course, you've got the, uh, the platform that the heat bed sits on. Um, it's not recommended for printing on since it's birch plywood. Uh, they tend to not be fully flat, so. You know, I wouldn't recommend printing without a heated build platform anyway. In case you're wondering, uh, right now what I'm printing is a uh, it's a laser tube mount for a 100 watt laser that I'm building. Uh, since I'm planning on producing kits for this, uh, I figured I'd just go ahead and make myself a laser. Uh, right now the laser cutting service is uh, pretty expensive, so I want to bring the cost down as much as I can. Uh, we're planning on doing a few special things with this kit since uh, part of the goal of this uh, effort is to provide continued support for the for the community of uh, 3D printing, whether it be RepRap, MakerBot, or any of the vendors out there. So we're, we're trying to make use of a lot of the vendors that are already existing rather than rolling our own on absolutely everything. Uh, so to that end, we are, um, you know, sourcing the heated build platform from from various uh, suppliers. Um, I've been talking to Brian Rafe Snyder about uh, sourcing his hot end uh, as an alternative to the wild side hot end for people that want something that, you know, doesn't look so half-baked, I guess. <laughs> well, I'm very happy with this new design. But uh, we'll provide that as an option. Uh, once uh, once Joseph Prussia's uh, rep wrap book comes out, we'll be throwing in a copy of that with the kit. And if uh, if you're getting a a kit with the unassembled electronics, we're going to be throwing in a cheap uh, digital multimeter and uh, not so cheap uh, soldering iron and solder. Uh, and there's going to be very detailed instructions on assembly and so forth. A lot of work to do, really. But uh, I think in the long run, uh, the hope here is that more people will get into the hobby. Uh, we're trying to make it as accessible as possible by eliminating the need to source so many uh, hardware components. Uh, this box really goes together very easily, um, just like one of the dinosaur wooden puzzles that you might see. But, uh, you know, like I said, there's a few issues to work out at the moment, um, this being one of them. I don't think we really need 
this roller bearing here. I'm thinking about just putting a through hole. Um, it tends to slip down. So anyway, that's the printer for now. Uh, more to come. I'll uh, keep you posted on when I'll have some of these plans up in case anybody wants to try and build one on your own. Yeah, one, one, I guess I should mention one thing about about uh, cutting these from laser files. Um, the guy that I'm using, um, he measures, he actually laminates this wood and uh, measures it before cutting. I guess that's why it's so expensive. He goes in and modifies my DXFs uh, in some areas uh, wherever the wherever the wood is coming through and he sets it for the thickness of the wood and so he says that's why it's uh, so tight. Um, I've got some ideas for the joint design to sort of eliminate the need for that but uh, I have one frame where that technique was not used and it is not tight at all. <laughs> Uh, in fact, I haven't attempted to build that printer yet, but I may give it a try just to see if, if that even really matters. I imagine it really does. But uh, just uh, just be aware that if, if you do uh, get your hands on the, on the design file here and attempt to cut it yourself, you may find that, uh, you know, Wild Sides printer is a piece of crap. <laughs> it really isn't. Uh, but I'm just saying it takes it takes a little bit of expertise to modify those files for your thickness of plywood, and uh, you know we've we've seen quite a bit of variation, uh, as much as a millimeter and a half in thickness uh, between two separate sheets of plywood. So just FYI. All right. Well, thanks for watching.